Another statement by ACOG opposing SB 5 by Senator Hager and HB 60 by Representative Lavenberg. Texas ACOG opposes SB 5 by Senator Hager and HB 60 by Representative Lavenberg. SB 5, HB 60 is an accumulation of all the measures we opposed during the 83rd regular session and remain opposed to in this special session. The Texas District of the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, ACOG, opposes SB 5, HB 60, and other legislative proposals that are not based on sound science or that attempt to prescribe how physicians should care for their individual patients. As a district of the nation's leading authority in women's health, our role is to ensure that policy proposals accurately reflect the best available medical knowledge. SB 5, HB 60 will not enhance patient safety or improve the quality of care that women receive. This bill does not promote women's health, but erodes it by denying women in Texas the benefits of well-researched, safe, and proven protocols. Texas ACOG opposes 20-week ban slash fetal pain provisions. Terminology. The use of appropriate standard terminology is essential. Embryo is the proper term to use for the second to eighth week of pregnancy. Fetus is the correct term to use until birth. Post-fertilization is rarely used outside of in vitro fertilization. The medical community uses the first day of the last menstrual, menstrual period, LMP, to date pregnancies. Post-fertilization is not an accurate substitute. Fetal pain. No credible scientific evidence exists of fetal pain perception, pre-viability. The medical profession produced a rigorous scientific review of evidence on fetal pain in the Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA, in 2005. Fetal perception of pain is not confirmed prior to the third trimester. Perception of pain is only confirmed after viability. Most obstetrician, excuse me, there was another heading, fetal viability. Most obstetrician gynecologists understand fetal viability as occurring near 24 weeks gestation utilizing LMP dating. Supporters of fetal pain present misleading evidence about fetal viability, especially in using post-fertilization age instead of LMP dating, and falsely implying high survival rates among neonates that are overwhelmingly pre-viable. Fetal anomalies. Many fetal anomalies can be diagnosed before 20 weeks. Others are not diagnosed until around 20 weeks. The committee substitute for Senate Bill 5 provides an inadequate exception for severe fetal abnormalities. This exception puts into statute how a doctor should exercise medical judgment and interferes with the private nature of deciding what to do when a fetus has been diagnosed with a severe fetal abnormality. Life of the mother. SB 5, HB 60 fails to entirely protect women for whom pregnancy poses serious health risks. By requiring doctors to wait until a woman faces immediate injury or death, it indefensibly jeopardizes a patient's health. Instead, doctors are forced to compromise patient health by waiting until a woman's condition deteriorates and becomes life-threatening or severely debilitating. Texas ACOG opposes provisions that treat women as if they cannot make their own medical decisions. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 5 would require a woman to come to an ambulatory surgical center, ASC, to take a pill for a medical abortion. She would then have to return a second time to the ASC to be watched taking the second pill within the next 24 to 48 hours. Requiring a woman to physically come in to take a second dose increases the risk of her not being able to return. This increases the chance for hemorrhages, blood transfusion, 
an emergent DNC. Women outside of Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, and Austin will have to travel long distances to find a clinic that meets ASC regulations. These burdensome requirements will make these services harder to access, as well as make these services more costly. Texas ACOG opposes provisions dictating protocol for physicians to follow when prescribing certain drugs. SB5, HB60 weakens standards of care and patient safety. SB5, HB60 requires providers to follow a protocol that has been proven to be less effective, more costly, and causes more detrimental side effects for women than care that is currently available and widely used. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 5 has permissive language allowing dosage amounts that follow the ACOG practice bulletin guidelines as they existed on January 1st, 2013. However, this is still codifying standard of care and is dangerous in the long term. Science and medicine evolve quicker than our laws. SB5, HB60, Physicians can be under SB5 HB60. Physicians can be punished for striving to provide the highest quality of care for their patients, the women of Texas. SB5 HB60 threatens the doctor-patient relationship. SB5 HB60 places an unacceptable level of control over the doctor-patient relationship in the hands of the legislature essentially allowing the legislature to practice medicine. SB 5 HB 60 creates medical protocol for physicians, dictates what to document, what tests to perform, what medications to prescribe, and when to schedule follow-up appointments. SB 5 HB 60 interferes with a doctor's ability to use his or her professional judgment to determine the appropriate medical care in each individual patient's unique circumstance. It undermines the standard of care and restricts the ability of physicians to prescribe and direct medication use. SB5 HB60 interferes with physicians' ability to establish an individual care plan. Texas ACOG opposes overreaching requirements for abortion facilities. SB5 HB60 requires additional standards that are unnecessary and unsupported by scientific evidence. SB5 HB60 does not promote the public health objective it claims to enhance. In fact, it harms public health by restricting access to safe, legal, and accessible abortion services. Late-term abortions 16 weeks and later are already required to be provided at a facility licensed as an ambulatory surgical center. SB5 HB60 has unintended consequences that make the treatment of certain conditions, for example, ectopic pregnancies, more difficult and expensive. Ectopic pregnancies are frequently treated in outpatient facilities and physician office settings. SB5 HB60 may prevent doctors from treating cases as they normally would. Ectopic pregnancies must be reported to DSHS as emergency abortions. This could result in physicians losing exemption from abortion facility licensing requirements. Positive patient outcomes will decrease. Medical costs will increase. It also affects more providers and facilities than just Planned Parenthood or traditional abortion facilities. Texas ACOG opposes unnecessary requirements that may be extremely difficult and in some cases impossible to meet without a basis in public health or safety. SB 5 HB 60 requires hospital admitting privileges for physicians performing an outpatient procedure that bears low risk. No other outpatient procedure requires a physician 
to have active admitting privileges in a hospital within a specific distance. Requirements for admitting privileges vary from hospital to hospital. Some hospitals bar physicians that perform termination from being awarded hospital privileges. Processes for approval of there admitting may be strong privileges. Passes, but we want to be able to hear the senator. Thank you, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Processes for approval of admitting privileges can take a lengthy amount of time, sometimes as long as licensure and board certification. A physician may have active admitting privileges, but not within a 30-mile radius. This is especially problematic for rural areas where hospitals are scarce. Not all hospitals may meet the requirement of providing obstetrical or gynecological health care service. There is not a special designation for hospitals providing OB-GYN services. This provision is vague and could have extensive consequences. Criminally penalizing physicians for performing a legal procedure is inappropriate and prevents physicians for performing a legal procedure is inappropriate. Criminally penalizing physicians for performing a legal procedure is inappropriate and prevents physicians from exercising medical judgment in order to treat their patient as they see fit. ACOG opposes SB 5, HB 60, and strongly urges the legislature to closely examine and follow scientific facts and medical evidence in its consideration of this and other health care legislation. We stand ready to provide you with factual information on medical issues that come before the legislature and hope you will contact us at any time. And it is signed respectfully, Lisa M. Hollier, MD, MPH, SACOG, Chair, Texas District American Congress of Obstetricians, and gynecologists.